It's time for Hustle University Basketball on the Hustle Eagles Sports Network. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Performance PT, designing a healthier you. Greenway Equipment Sales at Ellsworth and Bangor. Nothing runs like a deer. Governor's Restaurant. Life is short. Eat dessert first. And Casella, giving resources new life. And now, from the Newman Gymnasium, it's Hudson Eagles basketball. Hello and good afternoon to everyone tuned in and watching today's broadcast. It is Western Day here at the Newman Gymnasium as we, Avery and I, are up here in our cowboy suits and our cowboy hats. I am Reese Dannenberg alongside Avery Henningsen. We are here to bring you a North Atlantic Conference matchup as we have a rematch from last night's game between the Northern Vermont University at Linden Hornets and the Hudson University Eagles. It was Hudson who came away with an 84 to 39 win as we've really seen the defensive intensity turned up to another level in the past few games, only allowing more than 50 points in two of their last seven games, going six and one in that span. Yeah, they've certainly changed up that defensive, that defensive pressure in the last few games. It feels like the Eagles have started playing this kind of full court pressure with their fast guards out there, and then they let Bailey Donovan just sit in the back and just swat anything that comes inside to her. We will send it down courtside for the starting lineups and the national anthem. At this time, you can direct your attention to the core as we honor America with the singing of our national anthem. Singing today's national anthem, Hudson University nursing student, Allie Dearborn. Senior coach of St. Johnsbury, Vermont, number 15, Selena Porter. 
A freshman from Rutgers, Vermont, number 20, Hakeem Wingo. A sophomore from Tulsa, Virginia, number 21, Dave Smith. And a freshman from Virginia, Vermont, number 34, E.R. Mack. And he's coached by Ben Arsenal. He's assisted by Riley Moore. And now, the starting line for your Boston University Eagles. At guard, the senior from the Blue Bank, number 11, Trinity Mottigny. At guard, the senior from Smyrna Mills, Maine, number 21, Mottigny Porter. At guard, the sophomore from Brighton, Maine, number 22, Hannah Richards. At center, the senior from Island Falls, Maine, number 30, Bailey Donovan. And at guard, the boy who is shooting from Montour, New York, number 34, Vanessa Duarte. The head coach for Boston in her 32nd season is Kitty Walker. He's assisted by Ray Dodge, Lori Dodge, and Steve Watson. As we are just about set to get going here, they still have to remove the ball rack from the center of the court, though. As they're finally done. Austin coming into this one, just this game and then another game here on Tuesday to wrap up the season. Avery, what are some things we you want to see from this Austin team in those last two games to gain some momentum going into tournament play? Well, that main maritime game at the end of the season is going to be a big one, Reese. That one's probably going to determine who that number one seed in the East is. Maine Maritime took home that first one, but the Eagles are undefeated in outside conference play outside of that game, and they're going to need that one in order to take that number one seed. We see Huston winning the tip here as they look to get Donovan involved early down low. Kicks it out to Montigny, who drives in. Can't get that one to go. Grabs her own offensive rebound. Finds Duart open for a three, and she's able to knock it down on her first shot. Yeah, and you can't leave Duart that open, Reese. It's... It's just a little too easy for her to make a shot with nobody within 10 yards of her. And she has been absolutely on fire in these last few games, including last night, putting up 12 points, six assists, also had four rebounds. There's Richards who comes away with a steal, tries to take it coast to coast, but is fouled on the lay-in attempt. She will go to the free throw line. And Richards has been having a great last couple games. Man, we saw her a few games ago not start. I believe it was the the Thomas game that she didn't start for the first time all season. And I think she dropped 25 that night. And since then, she's been having some really good basketball games out there. And she's turning on the heat at the right time in the season right now, Reese. It's her first one from the line is good. She comes into this one at about 74%. From the line, and she is perfect there, two of two. Here's DeSorto with it now. Being guarded by Duart up top. Whitcomb now has it at the top of the key. Over to Mack. That is Smith, who takes a tough baseline jumper. And is able to knock it down. She hit a few tough jump shots yesterday as well. Porter with it in the corner now. Finds Donovan. Now over to Duart, left side. Porter, the mid-range jumper. That short corner shot for McKaylin Porter, that is her shot. She knocks that down almost every time. She's so good at it, Reese. It's just, she kind of works her way into this little pocket of space that a lot of teams leave open. You're used to guarding around the perimeter and right inside the paint, but it leaves these little pockets open that she's so good at finding and knocking home those shots. As Bailey Donovan comes away with a steal, He's able to find Montigny on the lay-in and a quick timeout from Linden. We will take one, two. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Huston Eagle Sports Network. Out of the timeout, it will be Linden basketball. 
Here is DeSorda with it again, coming across the half court stripe. Just about two minutes gone by here in this first quarter. Smith has it up top now. Good hands for Montigny, able to poke it away. They're gonna say he was out off her and it will stay Linden basketball. 15 on the shot clock. Yeah, and I think that timeout we saw just a minute ago was kind of a, they didn't really like how they started this game. The Eagles are already up 9-2. It feels a lot like last night's game already that the Eagles got out to a quick start. And I don't think they want to start a game like that again. Definitely a sense of urgency. And there's a great defensive possession there from I believe that was Richards who was able to get a hand on that one. There's a jump wall. Definitely a timeout, as you said, sense of urgency to get off to a good start after having a not or after not getting off to the best start in last night's game. Yeah, and that last play was a rare turnover from Duart, who's usually so good at finding those passes all around the court, but might just be game just started, that first pass is usually the hardest one. But as this game starts to roll around, I would imagine we're going to start seeing some of those signature Duart passes that find her players all around the court. She had a few beautiful assists last night. A couple full court dimes. Here's Mack, catches the inbound. He gets it over to DeSorda with 10 on the shot clock. Looking to find someone. Gets it to Smith with three on the shot clock. And dishes it to Porter who was unaware and was unable to get a shot off. Yeah, and we had talked about that full court pressure defense, but the Eagles have also been playing some really good one-on-one -on -one defense out there where when you force a team to go all the way down to those final seconds, it's showing how good you are at transitioning on defense through the zone, through the man-on-man, -man, and finding those players around the court. As Richards gets called for a travel on a step-through move, but what they're doing right now is they're not allowing Linden to even have the chance of shooting. They're not leaving anybody open. As soon as they get the ball, there's someone on them right away. And it's part of what this Eagles defense has been doing as of late. Definitely, especially yesterday. They forced quite a few shot clock violations and definitely had Linden shooting at the end of the shot clock, forcing up shots that they didn't want to. As There's a take by Richards that's no good. Whitcomb comes away with a rebound, and that is saved by DeSorda. Here comes Linden. Smith with it now, up top, being guarded by Montigny. DeSorda has it. Trying to make a move now. This is to Whitcomb. Whitcomb is looking. Finds Porter. Two seconds. And they're going to call a three-second violation on Kiara Mack. That will be the fourth Linden turnover already here in this one. Excuse me, fifth turnover. Yeah, and they called the three second on her, but there was only one second left on that shot clock. Again, the Eagles are doing a great job of just not allowing Linden to even have a shooting opportunity. Richards with it. She receives a screen from Donovan. Now kicks it corner. Duart has it at the top of the key. Five seconds on the shot clock. She puts up a floater and puts it in. Beautiful shot there from Duart on the run. Sort of with it now. Dished all the way around. Now to Smith. Porter catches down low. Has it stripped away. Montigny comes away with it. Pushing, she finds Richards. Richards' mid-range jumper is no good. Offensive rebound goes to Donovan, who kicks to Duart for three. Unable to hit that one. DeSorda now gets in the lane. Finds Mack for a mid-range jumper. That's no good. Donovan comes away with a board. So there's a great outlet pass from Duart. Up to Porter. There's one of those fantastic Duart passes like you were talking about earlier. I know when we, we called that senior game for Duart just last week, and I know they mentioned in her uh, in her in the speech they gave her before that game that she's one of the few players with over 250 career assists for Husson. Definitely a 
offensive threat all the way around. Scoring, passing, can do it all. And that was a big three we just saw there while I was talking. Yeah, yeah Smith uh, knocked down a huge three to end a scoring drought, but it doesn't matter because Hannah Richards comes right back and matches it with a three of her own. But that three is still big. The Eagles weren't allowing many shots. That was really the first open look they had in this whole first quarter, and they cashed in on it, and it, they're down 11 already, but if they can make those types of shots, those are the ones they need to get on the Eagles because I don't see them scoring that many inside with Bailey Donovan out there. Porter running right side. Throws it up for Donovan, who lays it in. And Linden will take a timeout. We will take one, too. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Huston Eagle Sports Network. If you want a place where you can be seen as an individual and know what you're doing and have a career to look forward to, this is your place. back out of the timeout as we see a whole new group here for Husson as it will be number 14 Carly Price, number 32 Lauren Cook, number 33 Lacey Scanling, number 15 Jordan Lengel, and number 23 Macy Beals as well all checking into the game for Husson. Here's Smith with it. Tries to find Porter down low and does, and she lays in a tough finish. Here yeah, comes we'll, sorry about that. We'll see how the Eagles adjust with a whole new group of five out there. None of these play, all these players are a little bit cold just because they just came in off the bench. They warmed up 10 minutes ago now. So it usually takes a new group just a few minutes to kind of get back into that group. It'll be Macy Beals taking it out underneath 20 seconds on the shot clock. And she throws it away. That one goes to the hands of McKibbergan. DeSorta with it now. Finds Porter on the high post. That finds Fortin down low, unable to finish there. Price comes away with the rebound, has it stolen away by Fortin, and she lays it in, and the foul. Carly Price picks up the foul there after, looked like she just lost the handle on that one. Fortin was able to pick it up and just lay it in. A yeah, great job by Fortin on that one to not give up on the play. She lost the rebound to Lengel and then just kind of poked it out and finished another tough basket. They've had a couple here in this last minute or so since the Eagles substituted that were some strong baskets underneath. Linden coming back into this one, 18 to 10. Our score here, two minutes to play in the first quarter. Cook will catch and fire for three. That one's no good. Macy Beals with the offensive rebound. Price with it now, over to Scanling. Cook drives baseline and has a pass tipped out of bounds. It'll be Huston basketball underneath the hoop with 10 seconds remaining on the shot clock. Beals the inbound. Cook right side with it. Dishes to Price, left side, four seconds on the shot clock. And we have a wedgie, Avery. Back to back games I've done, Reese. I think we talked about and it. And there was the one yesterday. One. Yeah.
seeing a lot this year. How often do you see that, realistically, in a game? It definitely needs to be at like this perfect angle kind of thing that you can't hit it obviously from front on or from the sides. It's kind of this like 45 degree angle on the basket that it needs to come in at, I guess. DeSorta has it now. Good defense from Price up top. Porter to Fortin down low. Tries to make a move on Lengel, goes up with it. No good. Rebound tipped around, saved by Price, but right into the hands of Fortin who lays it in. Yeah, and Fortin's winning inside right now, Reese. It seems like the Eagles are having difficulties kind of stopping her. She's using her strength and just getting inside on them and not allowing them to really, uh, she's, she's, using her, she's using her strength to make those tough baskets like you just said. He'll be hustling underneath the hoop again. Price catches on the left side. Trying to find Lengel. Gets it over to Beals now. Beals has it stolen away by DeSorta. Sorta driving in, can't find anything she likes. Now finds Porter. Goes up with the right. That one's no good. Might have been partially blocked. Price kicks up court. Cook left side. Hook finds Beals. She will put up a deep three. Rolls out. Rebound tipped around, and they're going to say it belongs to Husson. And the Eagles are on a little bit of a scoring drought right now, Reese. I don't think this group that's out there has scored yet since they came in two or three minutes ago now. And the, the Linden Hornets have done a great job of playing some really good pressure defense out there. Yeah, like you mentioned, scoreless in the last three minutes. As there's an unforced error. As it will be Husson taking over possession again underneath the hoop. 20 seconds on the game clock. Shot clock is off here. Beals catches right side. Now finds Lengel. Lengel will put a mid-range jumper and leave it short. Rebound comes down to DeSorta who is pushed. That foul will go on Macy Beals. That'll be her first foul on this one. 13 seconds here. First quarter. A little bit of full court pressure from the Eagles. DeSorta working on Cook. Puts up a floater. That's no good. Beals catches with two seconds. Has time. And decides not to shoot. 18 to 12 at the end of one. Husson leads this one. Don't go anywhere. We have second half action coming up. You're watching the Husson Eagle Sports Network. Husson makes it a priority of theirs to make sure each of their students are well-rounded and that we're prepared to go into the future. I mean, it's very rare to have a college that can emphasize the professor-student interaction, and Husson hits it right on the head. Instead of just, you know, sitting in the classroom, it's a great way to get hands-on experience. I'm actually out here doing things and seeing how things work. After being here and meeting the people, I decided this is where I wanted to be, that there was no better option for me. Husson makes it a priority of theirs to make sure each of their students are well-rounded and that we're prepared to go into the future. I mean, it's very rare to have a college that can emphasize the professor-student interaction, and Husson hits it right on the head. Instead of just you know sitting in the classroom, it's a great way to get hands-on experience. I'm actually out here doing things and seeing how things work. After being here and meeting the people, We are back at the start of the second quarter as right away, Donovan catches on a great cut. She is hit by Mack. She will go to the free throw line. Yeah, and Linden right now is on a 7-0 run over the last three minutes and 40 seconds. And that's something the Eagles don't want to have happen right now. They started this game well. They kind of hit this cold stretch. And I think Coach Kissy Walker is going to be brought back out Donovan and Duart, who are two of the Eagles' best players, to kind of get that get that train back on the tracks, sort of say. 
as we also see Layla Martinez, Faith Kilberg, and Sophia McVicker all check into the game for the first time as well. Wickham with it, now Fortin at the top. Mack has it down low. Looks to make a move on Donovan, can't finish though. Donovan comes away with the rebound. Here's Duart with it now. Crosses over half court. Schoberg has it in the corner. McVicker now working on Smith. Kicks to Schoberg, will put up a three. That one rolls out. And Smith coming the other way now. Picked up by Martinez, good hands there. Able to knock that one out of bounds. Sort of the inbound. Comes into Smith on the right side. Finds Fortin down low. Puts up a shot that doesn't roll in. Donovan comes away with the board and a foul on Fortin. That is Donovan's fourth rebound already here in this one. Martinez with it at the volleyball line. Q pull up for three against the 2-3 zone. Comes up a little bit short on that one. Yeah, and I, I just saw some great kind of senior uh, Senior, like one of those off the floor kind of things that you see, or not off the floor, but it's done to go into the stat book that Martinez missed that open three and then Duart just came right over to her and kind of tapped her on the back and told her, you're allowed to miss those ones mm -hmm. your freshman season. Those are the ones that you want to miss them now and get used to them so that in those big games later in her career, she's confident in making those shots. Beautiful pass there from Duart. McVicker unable to finish on that one. Martinez almost knocks it away. And yes, Duart, as you said, after that missed shot, kind of coming over, telling Martinez, like, hey, you're okay, that's a good shot, keep shooting. Definitely had the opening. Smith has an opening here, comes up short on a three. Well, the last thing you want to do when you're a young player is kind of get the yips out there. You don't want to feel like nervous to do something wrong, kind of. Right. I know that from playing years of sports. I play disc golf a lot. One of the biggest things with putting or with golf that putting, you don't want to get scared to try to make things when they're open, kind of. So I think it's big to keep that confidence with young players and allow them to not feel like if they do something wrong, they're going to get benched or they're going to be in trouble. As Duart drives in looking for a foul, didn't get one. And it is Linden coming the other way. Both teams on a scoring drought right now. Huston currently one of their last nine field goals. And Linden right there with them, one for their last eight. So good defense here from both teams. You see Donovan come over to help on that one. Orton unable to finish. Schoberg pushing now. She finds Donovan. Donovan's gonna put up a three. Hit two of them yesterday. That one comes up a little bit short. Sort of slowly bringing the ball over the half court stripe. Being guarded by Duart, she'll kick out. That is Whitcomb for three. No good, board comes down to Donovan again. That is her sixth rebound. Duart now kicks. McVicker has it. Looking to kick to Schober, but that gets poked out of bounds. Yeah, and DeSorda is all over the place in a good way right now, Reese. But I've seen her tip a lot of balls out of bounds, block up a lot of passing lanes. She, I've seen a lot of athleticism from her that she seems to kind of be reading passes before they happen and getting out there to cover players as soon as the ball comes in. Schoberg will take a corner three. Unable to hit that one. Rebound comes down to Smith, looking to push now. Good double team there from the Eagles, though. Picked up by Schoberg, and she throws it ahead to Martinez. McVicker 
and Martinez with a great double team there on the sideline. Yeah, and that's that pressure that we've been seeing from the Eagles a lot. That It almost seems like they have four guards out on the floor a lot of the times that can play that kind of full court pressure defense where all of a sudden you go from being all alone to having two players right around you kind of blocking you onto the sideline. Smith has it now, seven seconds on the shot clock. Puts one up, unable to get it to go, and Donovan comes away with another rebound. Schoberg looking to make something happen here. Kicks it to Martinez. Donovan catches and she is fouled by Porter. Looks like she might have lost a contact on that one too. Excuse me, that one, that foul will go on Fortin. It will be underneath the hoop, not a shooting foul. Duart now with it around the volleyball line. Drives in and a great pass, great find from Duart to Schoberg. Found a little bit of space underneath the hoop. Yeah, that was one of those ones where too many eyes were on Donovan inside and deservingly so obviously, but I think they had two or three players who were just kind of looking towards Donovan's way and Schoberg kind of creeped in behind and found that open look. As there was a great play there from Hussin, but it ends up in a turnover. Hussin had a three on one fast break and was unable to convert there. Unfortunate possession. Here's DeSorda now. Smith has it left side, being guarded by McVicker. Whitcomb. That shot, no good. Porter comes away with the rebound over Bailey Donovan. Unable to get that one to go off a nice pump fake. Donovan comes away with yet another board. McVicker, top of the key. She'll drive in and go up with the left and is unable to finish. Smith drives in, and she gets hit on the way up. Sage Smith will go to the free throw line to shoot two. This will be her first trip to the line. Smith coming into this one. A little bit over 12 points per game as the first free throw is a little bit long off the back of the rim. The second one is good. 24 to 13, our score here. Four minutes remaining in this first half. Richards with it now, just check back into the game. She slings a pass. Over to Porter, who's unable to hit the jumper. Rebound comes down to Selena Porter for Linden. Yeah, the Eagles haven't quite managed to capitalize, it seems like, in the second quarter on some really great plays out there. We saw the one that kind of the missed pass that kind of dribbled all the way along the end line and out of bounds just out of Donovan and Martinez's reach. And then we just saw that one there with a great pass underneath the it's kind of a missed basket. Here's a three point attempt, and that one's good. Kivergen with a beautiful shot. Nothing but net. Here's Porter now, or excuse me, here's Richards now. Driving in, finds some space, and is able to lay it in. 10 point lead for Hussin. Kivergen with it again. Tries to dump it off to DeSorda, has it poked away. Loring comes away with it. Duart with it now in the backcourt. She needs to get across half court, just barely does. Richards has it in the middle of the lane and they're gonna call a kick ball. 
Yeah, and I think the Eagles would have rather that one just get not noticed on that one as Porter had a pretty wide open look there from right in one of those little pockets we've talked about that she's so good at. Duart almost didn't get the ball over the half court stripe in time as Richards unable to finish a layup there. Good hands there to disrupt the pass from Smith. Almost another 10 second violation. Great defense there from Richards, full court. Kibbergen with it. Porter, Selena Porter. Kibbergen to put up another three at the end of the shot clock. That one's no good. Whitcomb unable to finish off the offensive rebound. And Montigny is fouled in the backcourt by DeSorda. Duart with it now. Montigny left side, drives into the middle. Richards right side, ball gets swung up top. Richards looking to make a move down low, can't finish. Sort of running the other way with it now. Been a low scoring game here so far, every 26 to 16, only a minute 40 remaining in this first half. I think the Hornets can be happy with this first half. They lost last night by almost 50 and, I guess almost 40, and those aren't the, or over 40, but those aren't the kind of scores that you want to see out there. And in this one, they've done a much better job of playing defense on the Eagles. And on the opposite end, the Eagles haven't really quite managed to finish some of those open baskets that they've had. A lot of defensive intensity from both teams in this one. Austin currently with seven turnovers, Linden with 10 of their own, as Montigny has a great take to the bucket. Over the defender, too. Sorta with it. 50 seconds remaining in this first half. She has it at the volleyball line, being guarded by Richards. Kicks out to Smith. Good defense here from Montigny. Who forces her to dribble out of bounds. Great defensive stand there for the Eagles. Back to that turnover conversation you were just talking about. I think that's something that you see a lot when teams play each other in back-to-back -back nights. That that first half is often a little bit of a chess match. They both just played each other. They know each other at least a lot more than they did coming in. Teams change season to season, but it's a lot harder to change night to night kind of thing. And you see a lot of these games that they might start off slow, and then all of a sudden Coach Walker or Coach Arsenal figure out something a little bit different with the other team, and that flips on its head. We see Montigny at the line here. This will be her first attempts of the game. It's her first free throw is up and in. Shooting at about 73% on the year. She knocks them both down. She gives the Eagles a 14 point lead with 30 seconds to go in this first half. Smith with it, being guarded by Montigny. Montigny went for the steal. And Smith found a lane to the bucket, and she gets fouled on the way up. It will be Sage, oh, excuse me, it will be underneath the hoop for Linden. Shot clock and game clock pretty much even here. 3.3 3 second differential, and there's a steal anyway. Here comes Richards and the Eagles. With 10 seconds remaining, as Duart's gonna pull up for three and leave it short, but she gets her own rebound. Richards now for three, and that one's good. Two seconds, Smith with it. Two quarters in a row, we haven't seen a shot at the end. What a timely three from Hannah Richards to end the half, 33 to 16, Husson Looking a little bit more in control of this one than they were at the start. Avery, what did you like specifically in that at the end of the second quarter there going into halftime for Hassan? 
that was a great three-point shot for momentum reasons for the Eagles that they had had kind of an on and off first half, but that last one there right at the end kind of gives them this little momentum boost where they can say, oh, we're still in control of this game. It leaves Linden with kind of a bitter taste in their mouth. They played a great half and then give up a big three right there at the end. And now the Eagles are going to go into halftime up more than they were there for a little bit. And it's not, it's in that last three and a half minutes or so, they played better defense, held Linden scoreless, and kind of switched it on them a little bit compared to that first half of the first half, that is. We will go through some quick numbers. Leading the way for Husson, it is Hannah Richards with 10 points. Montigny added six. Duart added five. She also has three rebounds, three assists, and two steals already in the first half. Kaitlin Porter and Bailey Donovan each with four points. Martinez and Schoberg with two. And on the Linden side, it is Smith leading the way with six points. Fortin has added five. McKivigan added that three, and Porter added a layup of her own. We will have more second half action after the break. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Huston Eagle Sports Network.
Welcome back, everybody tuned into the broadcast. First half stats, run through them real quick one more time. Hannah Richards, 10 points leading the way. Montigny with six, Duart with five. Porter and Donovan each have four. Martinez and Schober each with two. Avery, one thing we've seen lately, this team's still winning games, still putting up points, but Bailey Donovan has not had the 20-point performances that we were growing accustomed to seeing in quite some time. Well, I think a lot of the teams that we saw at the start of that season didn't really have any true bigs. And the last few teams the Eagles have played have had players who are in that kind of 6-1 range who are still smaller than Donovan but can at least kind of slow her down. And they've, a lot of teams have been doing a really great job of kind of having one player play behind her to not let her turn and try to finish and one player play in front of her to intercept Trump some of those passes coming in low. So you have to high point her, which leads to some turnovers if you miss that pass. And a lot of teams have just done a really good job of switching onto her and not allowing her to have those easy baskets. We saw some of those games at the start of the season with some of their home games. I remember the USM game or the Umpy game that they just didn't have anybody who was remotely close to her size. You can't really have a five foot nine player matchup against someone Donovan's size and hope to win those 50-50 kind of shooting attempts. As we will see Lauren Cook and Sophia McVicker start in this second half for the Eagles. I know they've been lifelong friends. I, I saw a little piece that got put through the sports information department about that, that they played, I believe, I think you would probably have a better idea than me, that you grew up around them, that they grew up together in the same kind of school system, played a lot of ball together. They look very similar out there on the court, and they have very similar shooting types. You can see that they obviously got coached by some of the same people out there. As second half getting underway, 33 to 16, the score to start this half. As Linden will start with the basketball, Desorda has it now. Has it on the left side here. Duart guarding her. Gets it over to Smith. Ten on the shot clock. Smith finds Whitcomb, who will put up a three. That one's no good. And Cook will let it bounce out of bounds. Possession going to the Eagles. And the Eagles right now are on a 9-0 run, Reese. They went on kind of a cold streak there in the middle of that second quarter where they only had a few buckets in there. And since then, they made a few changes, and they've really been quite dominant. That three-point attempt by Duart is no good. Offensive rebound to McVicker. Ball gets passed around, finds Cook for three. Bailey Donovan is able to come down with the offensive rebound. That is Donovan's ninth rebound in this one. Comes in averaging about 13 per game. McVicker right side. He'll drive baseline, nothing there. Finds Duart. Ball finds Cook, now Porter left side. Goes baseline, he can't finish there. Whitcomb comes away with the rebound. DeSorda has it now. Smith. Now Whitcomb right side. Porter has it. Porter against Porter here as McKaylin Porter is able to tip it away from Selena Porter. And Selena Porter will put up a jump shot. That is no good. Cook comes away with the rebound. McVicker has it now, swings it over to Cook. Pump fakes and drives. Ball gets swung around to Duart. And they're gonna say that Cook picked up her pivot foot on that one. That'll be a turnover for Husson. Ninth Huston turnover in this one. Linden currently at 12 of their own. Smith with it left side. Three pointers, no good. Porter comes away with the offensive rebound, but Duart's able to slap it away and come away with it. And 
Dewar drives in, and they will say that that one is blocked out of bounds. Huston will retain possession underneath. Porter will get it off the inbound right side. And a great pass from Donovan. Porter unable to finish that one. Sort of pushing in transition now. She's able to lay it in, taking it coast to coast all the way for the finish. Yeah, that's that speed that we've seen a lot in this one. That I've seen her kind of she accelerates really fast and gets going before players can really catch up to her. Ball finds Duart in the corner, and she hits a three, her second three of the day so far. She's now two of five from deep, eight points for her. Whitcomb will take a long two, rolls around, and Bailey Donovan comes down with her 10th rebound. Duart pushing in transition, finds Cook in the corner for three. A little bit short there. Fights for the offensive rebound. Can't come away with it. Here's Smith going the other way. Up with the left hand and cannot finish as that one rolls around and rolls out. And Smith almost made a great little move there on Duart to net that basket, but just quite, couldn't quite get it. As McVicker is able to hit a three from the left corner, and there's a steal off the inbound from Cook. And a timeout from Linden. We will take one, too. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Huston Eagle Sports Network. Nothing runs like a deer. Whether you have a lawn to mow, a driveway to plow, or a garden to till, our customers know you can't beat the quality and reliability of a John Deere. And right now at Greenway Equipment Sales, we have a great offer for you. Get 0% APR fixed rate financing for 72 months on a John Deere compact utility tractor with a six-year powertrain warranty. For more offers, go to GreenwayEquipment.com. See the Smith Brothers today at Greenway Equipment Sales, Ellsworth, and Bangor. It is Linden basketball out of the timeout. 40 to 18, our score here, six minutes remaining in the third quarter. We see some good on ball pressure here from Cook. DeSorda kicks the pass over to Whitka, or excuse me, Smith on the right side. She has it back now here. Good hands from Cook, is able to tip that pass away. Smith with it up top. McKivigan just checked back into the game. Three seconds on the shot clock, Porter with a jumper. That one is no good. Huston takes possession going the other way. Great defensive stand coming out of the timeout for Huston there. Duard with it now as we see a little bit of a 1-2-1-1 one, one, one pressure from Linden as Donovan's able to find some space down low and lay it in. Huston currently on an 18-2 run right now. As there's a steal from Cook. Going the other way up against DeSorda. Lays it up. Unable to lay it in, but she gets hit and will go to the free throw line. And some great defense by Cook in the last minute or two. We saw that steal right there before the timeout just a few moments ago. And then that tip ball around the shooting arc of the other team. And then that one right there that... She's doing a great job of kind of making those tough, gritty plays out there. As the second one from Cook is good. What? She knocks down a pair of free throws. Now up to four points on the night. DeSorda with it. Kicks to McKibbergan in the corner. That one's no good. Rebound comes down to Porter, there's a fight for it and a jump ball. Possession arrow points to Linden. So the Hornets will inbound, currently scoreless in the last two minutes, 40 seconds. 
Only one of their last 11 field goals have dropped. We see DeSorda looking to inbound here. Finds Porter, but that one gets tipped away. Stolen by McKaylin Porter. Duard with it now. Gets fouled by McKivergan on the drive. Yeah, and they're scoreless in that last 240, but I think they only had one bucket in there, and then they were also scoreless at the start of that fourth quarter, so or of this third quarter. So they've only scored two points in this entire quarter, and I believe going into halftime, they were on a, they were, the Eagles had scored nine straight going into that. So the Hornets haven't scored that many baskets in a while. There's a steal there, which much needed. Here's Smith now the other way. Sort of. Now McKibber again with it. McKaylin Porter almost comes away with another steal there. Now here's Selena Porter with a mid-range jumper. She's able to knock that one down. And that scoreless drought. McVicker has it now, top of the key. She receives a screen from Donovan. Nowhere to go with it. Cook in the corner, knocks down a three. That is her first three of the day. She is one for four from deep now. Smith with it. Smith will take a three, top of the key, trying to answer. That one's no good. Duart pushing. Comes the Eagles the other way. Great bounce pass. Cook, same spot. Can't get the same result as that one rolls out. Here is Smith with it on the right side. Sort of shoots a three. That one's no good. Porter up ahead, Cook with the right hand, lays it in. And that was a great layup by her. She was running at pretty full speed on that and kind of had to take the pass quick and shoot it while she was still running and had no chance to kind of plant her feet or get ready for that one. As we see Trinity Montigny, Lacey Scanling, and Hannah Richards check back into the game for the Eagles. as well as Ryan Fortin for the Hornets. Porter kicks to Whitcomb on, or excuse me, Smith on the right side. That shot is no good, and Donovan comes away with a rebound. Here's Richards pushing the other way now. Duard finds some space, will put up a three. Unable to find the roll there. Montigny comes away with a great offensive rebound. Hands it off to Donovan who can't finish. Here is Linden, sort of with it. Fortin has it. Thought about a three. Sort of drives in, has it poked away by Richards. Good hands there. And the Eagles are doing a good job defensively, but offensively they've been on a little bit of a cold streak, and it's, there's been a few missed baskets. You had that big one from Cook, but outside of that, not that many big plays from the Eagles. Borden has it in the corner, only five seconds on the shot clock. Three seconds, they got to get a shot off, and she's able to find Porter by herself underneath the rim with one second on the shot clock. It was a great job by her working against Donovan to kind of get past her, and then Porter got left all alone there with an interesting defensive uh, structure there for the Eagles that they didn't find Porter right underneath the basket. Richards finds herself open for three. She knocks it down. We see DeSorda a little bit shaken up on that play. Yeah, I think she got knocked over and kind of hit the back of her head maybe. I can see her kind of holding it, but 
that's a big loss. Not not a loss, but they want her out there right now. She's one of their lead ball handlers, and it allows the Eagles to kind of get that tone turnovers working again in this second half. One of their primary ball handlers, as you mentioned, does a lot of the point guard duties. Porter trying to find somebody. Now finds Smith being guarded by Montigny. Again, down to 10 seconds on the shot clock. There's a great cut by Whitcomb. Can't finish. Thought she was fouled on that one. Richards pushing in transition now. She goes up. Cannot lay it in. Donovan tiptoeing the baseline. Montigny will catch and shoot for three. And leave it short. Kivigan down on the other end. Turns it over. Tries to go into Montigny, who pulls the chair out, it looked like. And McKivigan goes, excuse me, has the ball go right out of bounds. We want to take a moment to thank today's game sponsors. Performance PT, designing a healthier you. Greenway Equipment Sales in Ellsworth and Bangor. Nothing runs like a deer. Governor's Restaurant, life is short. Eat dessert first. And Casella, giving resources new life. And a big three right there, Reese, during that little ad read that Duart in that deep corner sent one in over the top, and that puts her into that double-digit range. Smith with it left side. Again, down to five seconds on the shot clock. Fortin tries to make a move on Donovan. No good. Here come the Eagles the other way. Five seconds. Duard pulls up for three. Leaves it short. Smith comes away with the rebound. And that is how the third quarter comes to an end. Huston Eagles leading this one 55 to 22. We have one more quarter coming up. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Huston Eagles Sports Network. Five years ago, we started this journey of recycling. And with that same ingenuity, with that same innovation, and with that same entrepreneurship, we're approaching our next 45 years. We have an obligation to figure out how we can consume less, how we can recycle more, how we can create more sustainable products, and how we help our customers enable that. We owe it to the future generations to continue to do better and recycle better. And we are here to start the fourth quarter, 55 to 22. Our score is it is Husson basketball. Richards has it. Now over to Lengel, just check back into the game. Here's Price who will put up a three and come up short, Disorda with the rebound. And it's good to see her back out there. We saw her get up kind of shaking up, but seems like she's okay and back out on the floor. And another big play there for Linden. That is Smith with her second three of the game. She's now up to nine points, also six boards. Montigny has it, middle of the lane. Looks for a foul, not there. Linden coming the other way. Sorta of tries to kick it to Whitcomb and gets there, almost tipped. Smith, this is to Fortin down low. Fortin now going to work on Lengel. He lays it in. Price with it, gets it up ahead quickly to Montigny. She drives baseline and cannot finish the layup. Here come the Hornets the other way. Fortin down low, this time being guarded by Scanlon. we 
Gordon gets her own rebound there. DeSorda now drives in, put up a floater. That one's no good. Richards has it poked away. Wickham now has it under the hoop. Finds Porter for the mid-range jumper. That one's no good. Lengo comes away with the rebound. Jump shot is no good. Lengel right there for the rebound. And Lacey Scanlon will go to the free throw line. These will be her first attempts on the day. The first free throw is up and it is down. And that's big, that ends a almost three minute scoring drought again for Husson. As Scaling knocks down both free throws. The game for the Eagles, 10, Layla now see Layla Martinez as well checking back into the game for Husson. Smith with it. Finds Porter on the right side. Looks to make a move on Scaling. Puts up a hook shot, no good. Richards pushing the other way in transition. Right idea for the pass. Has it tipped away though. Sort of dives on the floor, is able to save that one for Linden. Fortin gets trapped on the sideline. And because of that trap, there was a timeout forced. We will take one, two. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Huston Eagle Sports Network. Choosing a school is really difficult, but I have never felt like I should have gone somewhere else. The thing about I like about the school, the class sizes are smaller. Making friends is easier here because of the fact that you are such a tight-knit community. I was shooting around a basketball. That's how I met my first friend. You meet a lot of new people from different areas of the world. I feel like I've grown so much here. And there's so many amazing people that work here to learn from. I definitely made the right decision coming to Hassan. Out of the timeout, it is Linden basketball. Currently trailing in this one, 57-27. Sorta of catches on the right side. Now it's Fortin with it up top. Whitcomb drives baseline. Three seconds on the shot clock. Richards is able to get a hand in there. It will be a jump ball. Staying with Linden, only two seconds on the shot clock under the hoop. Smith has it, has to force up a shot. That one's no good. Here is Richards now with the ball. Price has it right side. Martinez. There's a great play there from DeSorda to poke that one away. Cannot knock down the floater though. A little bit out in front of Martinez was the pass from Richards there on the fast break. Yeah, the Eagles just tried to be a little bit too fast in transition. And that's one of those ones where you just kind of want to slow down the whole offense, let people get back up there. You see that a lot on those types of plays where it's a turnover, then a turnover, then a turnover that players just aren't ready for those passes. Smith with it, finds DeSorda in the corner. She throws it right to Jordan Lingle. Yeah, she kind of lost her footing on that sideline and felt that she was probably going to step out there and just kind of tried to force something inside and hope somebody was there. Scaling with a save. Lengel has it at the high post against Mack. Richards now with it. She'll put up a three. No good. Martinez with the offensive rebound. Kicks to Lengel high post. In and out on the jumper. Scaling with an offensive rebound and she puts it in. Yeah. 
McKinley now up to four points, three rebounds as well. And the Eagles are 100% from the free throw line in this game, Reese. That was a little stat I was just looking at over on my screen, but they've done a good job offensively and defensively in this one, but it hasn't exactly been a smooth game. It's felt like they've had runs, and then they've also had runs where they've just felt cold and haven't scored as many baskets as you would like. As Smith knocks down a jumper, and then Linden forces a turnover right away off the inbound. They have it again underneath their own hoop. Kivergen catches outside. Now down low to Mack. Goes up and lays it in against Jordan Lengel. Richards has it now. She pushes in transition. Finds Lengel down low. Lengel is able to lay it in. And Richards is so good at that, at those kind of fast break plays where she streaks right up the middle of a defense and then feeds it left or right to her offense. Sort of drives in the kick. Good pump fake from Mack. Get Lengel off her feet. Find a lane to the bucket. Richards has it now, top of the key. Martinez down low to Lengel. Lengel will shoot a mid-range jumper and knock it down. That is Langle's second bucket in this one. Here's Smith with it. Left side against Martinez, now Mack with it. Kicks two to Sorda up top. Over to Porter, great read from Scaling there to help side rotate defensively. And she read that one like a book and just kind of stepped right in front of that and took that ball away. Price unable to hit from the left side for three. Here's Distorta in transition the other way. Puts up a floater, no good. Up court pass from Richards to Lengel, unable to handle that one, and just slipped right through her hand. As we see Faith Schoberg, Vanessa Duart, Macy Beals, and Sydney Loring all check back into the game for the Eagles. Whitcomb with it. Mack on the block against Lengel. Goes to the left, unable to finish. Gets her own rebound though. McKivergan has it. The floater is no good. Gets her own offensive rebound. Whitcomb, Smith puts up a three. She's short there, rebound comes down to Lengel. Her third. Schoberg with a great look down low to Beals, can't finish. And a jump ball. Possession arrow pointing towards Husson, so it will stay Eagle basketball. Schoberg to inbound. Gets it into Beals. Loring with it now. Beals will put up a three and come up short. McKibbergen running in transition for Linden. Find Smith. Great feed down low to Mack who cannot finish. Got the inside position. Got the shot, but was unable to knock it down. Layla Martinez checking back into the game for Hassan. McKivergan finds some space down low and is unable to finish the layup. Duart with it now, top of the key. She'll drive in. Over to Schoberg, who will put up a three. No good on that one. Offensive board comes to Loring. Duart will shoot a three now. Short. Oh, 
Kivergan going all the way to the basket. Coast to coast, finishes that one, grabs the rebound and goes all the way. She decided to take that one for herself, Reese. The, she kind of saw a little opening and it kept looking like she was going to pass it around and then she just brought that right inside and took that to the hoop. Feels unable to convert on the layup. Good rebound from Loring. Again, unable to convert. There's some great hands and a great steal by Martinez underneath the hoop. Schoberg with it. Ball finds Macy Beals for three. Great save by Loring. Duart, the mid-range jumper, is no good. Yeah, and that last one is one Beals is going to want to have back. There was nobody within five yards of her on that, and she kind of missed it, and then the Eagles got the ball back, but it was just one of those ones where it feels like if you can make that one, those are the types of shots that kind of get the team going on the bench. Both of these teams in a little bit of a shooting slump here with only a minute to go in this one. Matt catches down low and loses her footing, and she is called for a travel. Orton checks back into the game. 40 seconds remaining in this one. Duart catches left side. Boring has it. Schoberg now. 15 on the shot clock. Martinez will shoot a three, and she will hit it. 25 seconds remain. 66 to 36. Our score here. And that's why you keep taking those shots, Reese. We saw her miss one earlier in the earlier in the game and kind of hang her head. Duart tapped her on the back, told her it was okay, and then she hits a big one here in this fourth quarter. As Fortin goes up with it there, they're going to call a foul on Vanessa Duart, which will be her first foul. Gordon at the line. Her first one is up. It is no good. Gordon currently shooting at about 65% from the line on the year. The second one is up. And it is good. 10 seconds remaining here. As Martinez will bring it over half court and just dribble the timeout. That will do it for this first half of our doubleheader. The Austin Eagles come away victorious, 66 to 37, against the Northern Vermont Linden Hornets. Avery, pretty dominant game on the defensive side for Huston. What did you see that really stood out to you? They did a great job out there, and I think Linden as well. They held this, or last night they gave up 84 to this Eagles team, and tonight they gave up 20 less and scored just about the same as they did last night. So a good job from them to adjust to this Eagles offense. And for the Eagles, it seemed like they just struggled on some of those open shooting opportunities. They had some tough baskets, but it didn't really feel like they were shooting on all cylinders on offense tonight. Yeah, definitely both teams you could say it was on the shooting, but you could also say both teams were having a great day defensively. 21 forced turnovers for Husson and 16 forced turnovers for Linden. So both teams struggling to take care of the ball in this one. Wrapping things up, we will look at some quick numbers. Hannah Richards led the way for Husson with 13 points, also added three rebounds and two assists. Vanessa Duart followed that up with 11 points and six rebounds. Lauren Cook added nine off the bench. Montigny and Donovan each with six. Bailey Donovan pulled down 14 rebounds. Martinez with five. Porter, Lengel, and, Scal and Scanlon all with four. McVicker and Schoberg added two as well. And on the Linden side, it was Smith leading the way with 12 points and six rebounds. Fortin added eight points off the bench. Selena Porter added six points and eight rebounds. McIvergan came in put up five points, Mac with four, and DeSorta with two. 67 to 37, the score for our first game. 
Bree Standenberg alongside Avery Henningsen. Stick around, don't go anywhere. We have one more game coming up at three o'clock. You're watching the Hudson Eagle Sports Network.